Hey guys, have you ever heard of a task box? Well, if you'd like to hear more about it, stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to Pediatric Therapy Essentials. My name is Dr. Heather Sossaman and I'm a pediatric physical therapist. And here on my channel, I like to create educational videos that help us break down complex medical topics into words and language we can all understand, as well as movement and activity videos that encourage kids of all ability levels to get exercise and movement in their day. Now, if you find value in today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here and you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to this channel by hitting the button just below this video or the one at the end. Okay, let's talk about task boxes. So I recently undertook a huge project of creating 50 task boxes for my elementary and high school students. Now I had so much fun creating these boxes and researching all the fun ideas that I thought, let's make a video about it so I can share it with you guys. So a task box is exactly what the name suggests. It's a box that holds a self-contained activity for a child to perform. Now the activity in the box can focus on fine motor skills, visual motor skills, self-care skills, or even job tasks. The goal of the task really depends on the person that's creating the box and what they're going for. But how is a task box different from a simple activity that we would do in a classroom or during therapy? Well, task boxes are designed to teach a child independence. We want the task in the box to be challenging enough that it requires concentration and focus, but easy enough that it can be completed independently. So the real goal for the task box is that a child can grab one box, go over to their desk or table, sit down and complete the task on their own. We want them to be able to complete something without adult instruction, without adult cueing, or without adult assistance. And sometimes, especially in special education, kids can become dependent on our prompts and cues in order to complete a task. So the task box takes the adult out of the situation and helps the child learn how to follow the steps and complete a task without any help. Okay, now that we know what a task box is, let me tell you about all the different ones I created for this project. Now I am creating boxes for kids of all different ability levels. So I have some kids that have a lot of significant physical impairments, so their boxes are scaled to meet their needs. And I have other students that are a little bit more mobile and able to do more activities, so their boxes are a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna go through my boxes by different category and different level as I give you all the ideas. All right, are you ready? So the first group of boxes is simply sensory exploration. So these are for kids that are just starting and we're trying to get them used to the idea of the box, putting their hands in it and exploring what's in it so that they can then learn to do a task. Now my sensory exploration boxes include things like these textured balls that are easy to hold and provide some sensory input, as well as boxes filled with rice and beans that you can put small toys and items in for kids to pick out. I made others that had water for water play, musical instruments like maracas, and textured blocks. The next group of boxes are my sorting boxes, and we sorted by different categories. The first one was sorting by color. In this box, we're using bears and a muffin tin to sort. I placed some small circles of different colors in the bottom of the muffin tin so kids know which bear goes in which section of the tin. In this box, I'm using three colors of clothespins to sort by clipping them onto a piece of cardboard with three colored sections. I created the colored sections with pieces of construction paper. In this box, I made a funny face on a piece of cardboard. The pipe cleaners serve as hair, and the object is to place the colored beads on the corresponding pipe cleaner color. And my final color sort uses a pill container that I used labels with colored dots to indicate which bead goes in which section. I used the same pill containers to work on one-to-one -one correspondence. In this example, students place the number of beads in the section that corresponds to the number written on the opening. 
I worked on this same skill by creating a small cardboard circle with sections that contain dots. The students need to match the clothespin with the same number of dots to the section on the circle. To sort by size, I used a shoebox with three different sized openings labeled short, medium, and long. I then cut straws in different lengths to fit in one of those three openings. My next group of boxes focused on fine motor control and hand strengthening. First, we have grasping pom-poms and placing them in a container with a specific opening. I made boxes with different sized openings and pom-poms to accommodate different ability levels. In this box, I printed off some free dot pictures from the internet to be completed with bingo dotters. My teachers are able to change the pictures out based on the season or on the lesson. For hand strengthening, I created the Old Faithful Tennis Ball Monster Game. Students have to squeeze and hold open the tennis ball while placing the beads in the monster's mouth. I also made a box with tweezers to pick up items and place them in a container. I used these small blocks because they were lying around our craft bin not being used, but you can use pom-poms, beads, or even cotton balls. Using the same dot picture printouts that I used with the bingo dotters, I made a box with Dollar Tree labels to peel and stick into the dots on each picture. In these boxes, kids can practice putting coins into a container. I have two different containers with different size coins to meet different kids' ability levels, and these boxes are by far the kids' favorites. Next, I used a Parmesan cheese container and some pipe cleaners for students to practice their fine motor control by carefully putting each piece of pipe cleaner through one of the openings. The next group of boxes are my favorite and these are self-care ADL type skill boxes. In the first box, I found a bunch of fun, bright colored socks that the kids have to match together and then fold. Next, I used some small plastic bins to create a silverware sorting station. And last, we used a clear plastic party tray to practice sorting money. And last but not least, we have our visual motor boxes. And these boxes were by far the most difficult. In this first example, we have two ways to follow and create patterns. Using both Legos and these small little stacking owls, I created patterns, took a picture, and laminated them and placed them in the box. The kids then need to follow the pattern and put the items together. In these space-saving activity bags, we have creating bead patterns on pipe cleaners, matching games using animals, creating a pattern with shape pieces from a visual model, and matching puzzle shapes to the corresponding opening. Well, those are just a few of the ideas that I came up with for task boxes. I would love to know what your ideas are. If you've created task boxes or if watching this video made you come up with some fun ideas, please be sure to leave them in the comment section down below so that we can all learn from you. And if you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you do need some more ideas on simple ways to use products from the Dollar Tree or around your house to create fun activities for your kids, I do have some great videos that I will link up here as well as down in the description box. And don't forget, if you need a quick review of all the different task box ideas I talked about today, there will be a blog post on the website, pediatrictherapyessentials.com. Well, I hope each and every one of you has a wonderful week, and I will look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Bye.